man, I was grooving. I was grooving too hard to that music to to stop it. We had to wait till that song was over. What's up, everybody? We're gonna do this thing today. We're finally gonna get on stream and hang out. Hello, hello, hello. Everyone doing okay? Jacqueline, Sandra, Andrew, Evan, all the people, all the people in the chat. E. Klimke, thanks for the uh, thanks for the sub. I really appreciate that. Google Prime, this is a nice shirt. I like this shirt. I like the bright colors. Y'all saw my fancy uh, my fancy green shirt yesterday when I was making a fool out of myself on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's a good blue, good blue. Here for the Braves in the boxes. Amazon Fresh and Wednesday, Wendy's. I haven't gotten either of those. Uh, haven't gotten either of those commercials. Anyone else? Tessa, what's up? Good to see you. Anyone else get uh, get any any interesting um, any ads today? I always like to check. So Wendy's and Amazon Fresh. Amazon Fresh makes sense. I mean, help the oh, Mr. Miller. What is up? No ad today. Cool. That just means I need to stream more. Tony, so last time we were on, you said your Twitch Prime got hacked and hijacked and repointed. That was a thing. That wasn't like a one-off thing uh, for you. That was, I've heard uh, a bunch of those, a bunch of that going on. So I'm glad you caught that. If anyone else, if you use Twitch Prime, if you have your tweet, Twitch Prime account linked to Twitch, if you have your Amazon Prime account linked to Twitch, go double check you're not subscribing to like some random Russian channel. It it was a thing. A bunch of Twitch account Twitch Prime accounts got repointed to random people who were not supposed to. So Tony found that out in last chat and then between last last stream and this stream I, I heard that it was like a real thing. Lamy Studios back in Imperial Blue. Um, we might have uh, a new Lamy Studio in this box. Sandra happened to you too. Yeah, apparently that was a thing. Panatic not being on here for his own stream. I, I'm a fan of the Russian Russian Twitchers. I uh, I subscribe to what's the is it called Russian fishing? I like the fishing streams. <coughs> so maybe that's maybe that's how I got hijacked. There's a game called Russian fishing. Let me tell y'all something. When Sea of Thieves gets fishing there's gonna be a lot of fishing on this stream like i'm gonna tell you straight up like we'll do pen stuff and then i'm gonna be on a boat fishing for hours just so you know this ahead of ahead of time i think we have two to three weeks left when that update comes so i'm not gonna be playing arena or anything like that on sea of these i'm gonna be fishing all the fish show you my pens i so before i show you these pens um, which were the the uh, yeah prototype dice? These were the pen show pens. I'll show you these things. I have four packages to open. One of them is very large. I think I know two things that are in here. I ordered a bunch of stuff from Jet Pens before we um, before I went to the pen show. So that box is waiting for me. I know what's in this envelope from Tokyo. I know what's in here. So. Um, that should be cool. Whoa, sorry about that. I have a box from Inventory. They've sent done a bunch of pens, um, you know, uh, recently, and this is a new one. I think they're gonna kickstart this one. I can't remember if they kickstarted their other ones. We're gonna do that. Once the update comes, will we have a streaming schedule? That's. We're gonna see what the manufacturing schedule for Spoke is like. Whether I can commit commit to a streaming schedule. And then we have a. Then we have an art snacks box, which we're going to talk about, which uh, there's an interesting story behind this one. So, Woo, that was a big one. That was so big I had to mute. Uh, but yeah, these are the pens I picked up at uh, the pen show. I've been using the heck out of this uh, Matt Miller pen. Uh, very, very happy with it. I got an email this morning from a friend day job got you a cross platinum ballpoint jay what that's awesome that's pretty cool so this uh matt miller pen let me read you an email i got this morning from my friend tony 
at not this Tony. He's not my friend. Uh, Tony Skull and Breen from Everyday Commentary. Commentary. So let me find this pen. This email. So, Brad, it is hard to overstate just how great of a knife maker Matt's dad is. In terms of modern customs, not art knives, R.J. Martin is basically as good as it gets. His stuff easily commands four to five thousand dollars. R.J.'s Q36 flipper is the standard by which all flippers are judged. FYI, Tony. So, Matt has the uh, has the manufacturing chops. So. Um, it's good to see him expanding out his his pin lineup pretty cool so it's 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 really neat to see so that's that's this pen full titanium very kind of lightweight for a metal pen he um thins out the barrel walls which you probably can't even tell by this but it's it's lightweight like pretty cool for aluminum aluminum titanium it better not be aluminum for what i paid for it it was crazy yeah, you do absolutely nothing for me, Tony, so I guess we're even. But no, I get it. I get it. This is not a pen for everybody by any stretch. And on top of that, they're expensive, like which is the double whammy. Um, does this pen do it for you, Tony? This is the weird uh, the Mont Blanc M rollerball that I've been wanting for a while. I couldn't pass it up for 165 bucks. Like, that's a lot of money for any pen, but for this pen... That's like half the price or maybe less. It was three something normally. I can't remember. But I wanted to try it. The interesting thing, which I didn't know, I was going into it to try to figure out if it fit the big, like the cool Mont Blanc ink refills that I wanted to try, like the um, Beatles and those types of things. It doesn't, but what it does fit is it fits the Schmidt refill. So this is actually the, the Schmidt P8126 refill in there. So, um, but yeah, oops, sorry, a little squeaky. But this is definitely a pen, like, I wouldn't recommend to anybody. It's not that great of a pen, but it's hard to... For something that I've wanted to have and see for myself, um, you know, it's it's okay. I, w I wasn't going to turn that down as, as much as I talked about it. It's a rollerball the same as the cap ballpoint, I believe. Wow, that's squeaky. Squeaky. So I'm sure I can get, like, a Schmidt ballpoint refill. I don't think the design's any different. They did do an updated one with like a orange band around there. Like if you look at Pete Dennison's review, like his has the orange band. Maybe Joe Crace's review might has the orange band as well. But I don't know what technically the difference is. I think the general overall silhouette is the same. So, and then these are the Brooks dice. Um, they're pretty cool. Oh no, Blaine, I need to go look at that. I actually I need to write that down so I go look at that. That was good, good check. What's up, mostly pens? <laughs> I'll do that, Jay. You need to just come up to San Francisco in um, in August. All right. So Blame found that he was going to look at my Pilot Juice review. And I don't know if you remember, I did not put your thing in the mail yet, Tony. I'll write that down while we're at it, while I'm writing things down. So hang on. Hold that thought. Ship. Tony. Two. Two. Cases, and then fix Blaine's link. So I don't know if y'all remember a long time ago when the Pilot Juice first came out. They had this really cool landing page on Pilot.co.jp. Yeah, the dice are acrylic. Um, that linked to like each Pilot Juice color had a character attached to it, and it was just a fun link. So. Blaine was doing his research on the site, clicked across the drink drink review. Lots of Wendy's ads today, Alexander. I mean, the, the juice review, not the drink review. Um, to that funny link, and it was what, like, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, adult, but it was, what was it, like pantyhose or something like that? It was something ridiculous. So Pilot actually lost the fun juice link, and I really pointed out in the review that I did to be like, hey, you need to go check out this link. And now that link goes, it's like totally broken and goes to some something stupid. So thank you for finding that, Blaine. <coughs> Excuse me. Are we going to talk about the Black Wong incident? I mean, we can. I felt like, a, oh, it was a hair removal link. We, we can talk about that. That was just, 
I mean, I couldn't do that if I tried. Like, number one, if I tried to do that, I, I wouldn't. Like, I have a conscience. Like, I wouldn't go, hey, let's let's uh, talk about the black wall and pencil. Ha ha, that'll be funny. Like, that's not in, in my uh, mindset. Um, and it wouldn't have come off as good as it did if it was, like, fake or something. But then, like, what, like it... I didn't notice it, like, but five minutes later, I'm, I'm just sitting in baseball practice, and the sun's blasting me, like, directly in the face, and, like, I got it, you know, texted, and I had been using that pencil for, like, 30 minutes doing some sketches, and I was, like, really impressed with it, so I wanted to say something on Twitter, and so I, I did that and went away and came back and checked, and then, like, I had all these mentions, I was, like, something, <laughs> something's up, something happened, and then I, um, then I worked, I, I looked back on it, and it just went, oh, no, and I was, like, it's kind of bad, but it's kind of great at the same time. So I said I wasn't going to delete it. So I did. And then, like, the first time I reread it, I stopped right at the Black Wong. Like, I just, like, I was like, oh, no, what did I do? And then I actually read, like, that plus the rest of the words. And it was really bad. <laughs> it was bad. It was so bad that I had to leave it. And uh, I'll just, I'll take the heat on that, but I'll take the, the funny, too. So it worked. It was just one of those things. I was blinded by the sun and uh, misspelled black wing. And uh, I will not live that down now, I don't think. Have any of your juices dried out? Had a 05 sitting for like maybe six months and it barely comes out anymore? Not particularly. I've heard of uh, juices tend to leak more than they dry out um, from the feedback that I get. But I haven't seen that happen. Um, I'll admit that I haven't been using them much recently, so I can't tell. You know, I, I don't know that I could give you a great answer. I'll check when I get home and see if anything weird is happening, but I haven't had haven't had much of a problem. Yeah, Jacqueline, it was uh it was funny after I was scared for like thirty seconds. <laughs> but then uh then I was like, I'm just gonna leave it. It's kinda great. Re whistles, what's up? How was the how was the uh the blizzard yesterday? How many did you go from like 70 degrees to like eight inches of snow in the span of 24 hours? Was it totally dumb out there? Because I was watching the Braves. The Braves got canceled uh, yesterday. Hopefully they got out before the storm. So, yeah. All right. Y'all ready to unbox some stuff? I got... We got to figure some of this stuff out here. Who is that? I saw... The, where, does, where does the thing here? Fizzled out there. Oh, Blake Moore. Blake Moore, what's up? Thanks for the follow, buddy. I don't know why I couldn't see that alert. All right, so let's do this inventory thing first. Twitch, woo! -hoo. So inventory started making those. I, I like that, like only three inches of snow. We're shut down for a week, three inches of snow. You're gonna be down here, Tony? You have to shoot me, uh, shoot me an email. I don't know that I have much going on next week, so. Inventory does um, machine pens. They're standard minimalist metal ice daggers. That's no fun. I hate that I'm gonna miss you next weekend or at next week, next month in Chicago. Sarah, that bites. Y'all should go read Sarah's book, even if you're not into horror. Her book. I keep. I keep pushing it because I'm not a horror person like I'll, I'll tell you straight up Sarah that is not my genre it's freaking good that is a really good book so there I'm gonna embarrass you right on stream wow he sent me a lot of stuff holy crap so inventory's coming out with a uh, with a combo meal type of pen where you can switch out the uh, Oh yeah, the Bone Weaver's Orchard. I forgot. I forgot that part. <laughs> the Bone Weaver's Orchard. Go and go in and buy it now. That's Sarah Inkwell Monster right there. I'm pointing at her on the screen. Um, it's really good. All right. So, I guess he sent me three, or there are all kinds of different parts. Y'all are gonna help me figure this out. So, the theory behind this pen that's coming up, um, I think he's kickstarting it. His name's Jeff. I keep I should keep saying they or he. His name's Jeff um, at inventory. Is a single barrel switch the tip from pencil to roller slash ballpoint to fountain pen with a single barrel. So we're gonna check this out right here and see if this actually works. 
I don't know what all of this stuff is. I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna start big. Oh, oh, cool. These are notebooks. We'll just, we'll save that to last. So this is the mechanical pen in brass. Are all these gonna say the same thing? Number two mechanical. It's calling it the number two mechanical pen. I'm just making sure that all of these are the exact same. Number two mechanical pen. Interesting. So, oh, here's the colors. Chrome, brass, this must be onyx. All right, so what do y'all want? Chrome, brass, or onyx? We're only picking one. We got the bomb cyclone. The bone weaver's orchard. You can type it in the chat, Sarah. Onyx, yeah, it's got to be Onyx, right? All right, brass, brass, do do do, brass, brass. No chrome. See, I would have picked chrome. That's why I asked you guys. Brass, brass, brass. All right, we'll we'll roll the dice on it. So it's about even between brass and Onyx. So we're gonna go uh, even numbers for Onyx. Odd numbers for brass. It's a five. It's brass, it is. See, Jonathan Brooks's dice came in uh, came in handy. All right, so the funny part here is I'm not gonna know how to do this pen. So we might have to, uh, we might have to fail completely. So here's your base, your base pen. So nice, solid brass looking pen. Really strong clip, really good feel good weight medium to heavy weight uh, brass I don't know what knock this is it's not a traditional knock um, I don't know if he's getting someone to make the mechanism for him feels good solid click looks like you know your standard Parker style ballpoint ish refill nope Schmidt easy flow 9000 yeah so your Parker style ballpoint refill so oh I bet this is instructions <laughs> I might need these Yes, these are the Brooks die. So we might need the, the instruction booklet here. Nope, it's the warranty card. So three pins, two warranty cards. So one of these guaranteed to be broken. So that's how it works. Just kidding. Let's see. All right, so the theory is I should be, oh, maybe it doesn't switch into a fountain pen. I thought they switched into a fountain pen too. I don't know. So there is a pencil mechanism. So he sent me three pencil mechanisms. No, these are, yeah, these are pencil mechanisms. 0.5, yeah, all 0.5 pencil mechanism. Does the clicky mechanism sound scratchy at all? Let me retry. It didn't. It looks like there's a gap between the pin mechanism. Yeah, it's not that, it's large. I'll show it to you in a minute. It looks like, I don't know if you can see it because of the glare, but there is a gap. I would say it's not scratchy at all. It actually avoids the wall when I click it. So I, I would say no scratchy, no scratchy. So let's see if I can figure out how to swap a pencil mechanism into this. I don't know what all these parts do. I need instructions. Oh, there's my third warranty. Oh, they're all good. Yeah, well, he's not, he's not, the warranty isn't the selling point, I don't think. I think it just came with it. Instructions, instruction sheet. <coughs> it just happens to come with it. All right. Is this what y'all signed up for today? Yeah, we're not building this on the, on the stream. I mean, it's cool. Like, I can totally do this, but I don't want to sit here and mess around with this for 15 minutes. But I think it's pretty cool. This is the inventory. What's he calling it? Number two mechanical pen because it, it switches between a ballpoint pen and it has the internals to swap into a mechanical pencil. So it's kind of cool. So, yeah, I'm not going to bore you all to death with, like, swapping this out. But um, 
Oh, to compare it. What's a good comparison? Here's a Retro 51. Emil. So there's something for you to look at. So if we put um, tip equidistant, you can see it's not that much of a monster of a pen. Jim, what's up? So yeah, this thing has all kinds of parts. I don't want to lose all this stuff. I don't want to bore you all to death with the... Uh... <laughs> good job, Tony. I think you must have canceled it on your own. I don't want to bore you all to death with the... Um... Thing. I want to go back to something Evan said about the warranty. I will never buy warranty is never in consideration for like any like pen or stationary products for me. I mean, if you offer it, it's great, but that's not going to, that's not going to be, I'm not going to add that to the checklist of why I should buy it. Like you said, I should, I expect your, I expect your pen to work when I receive it and I expect it to continue to work. And I expect if a problem has it, I can contact you easily and get it either repaired or replaced. You can offer me whatever you want, but that's not like that doesn't go on the pro list. It's a nice to have. So I rarely feel bad about anything. I especially don't feel bad about not making you a Sinclair in wax canvas. I super don't feel bad about that <laughs> every day. I'm like, I'm not making that crap. All right, basic black notebooks here. Sorry, I just open up this other pack. They are pretty much no branded with little inventory logos in the middle which is nice and subtle little inventory on the back page um but that's the thing evan if you oh it's a four pack four pack of notebooks regardless of the warranty i think you would buy them because it's a good product and you know they would stand behind it right like they can tell you they have the warranty all they want but you know, it's delivering on that warranty and things going unsaid. I don't know. I think you know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to belabor the point, but yeah, I'm with you in general. All right, let's put these away because I will sit there and fidget with them. That's a lot of pens in this box. So all of this means that I'm definitely going to be given probably at least two, if not all three of these away. So cool stuff. Thank you, inventory. Um, I'll review these. We'll see. I don't know when the Kickstarter launches or anything like that. I don't know if I'll get the review done before the Kickstarter launches. I never promise anyone for anyone that, you know, my reviews, you can request anything you want, but my reviews happen when they happen. Oh, what was I going to ask you about the Coleman, John? Something you said in your in your post. It was, a, I mean, a positive thing. I, I just can't remember. All right. That's inventory. I need a drink. All right. Y'all want art snacks next, or do you want Tokyo paper next? They're both good stories. Art snacks. Sunny Boy was in first. Art Snacks Tokyo, Art Snacks Tokyo. All right, we're doing Art Snacks. But both of them actually have good stories. So, I was a long time Art Snacks subscriber. Should talk like this. And I stopped subscribing to Art Snacks because there was enough art products in there that I didn't use that the cool stuff um, kind of got lost in the shuffle. Oh, I should have let the dice decide. Andrew, you're always smarter than me. So, um, yes, uh, Jim, exactly what that is. Um, with a um, Macarta handle. That's crazy. I got this at Drum Ghouls when I visited them last year. Um, I'm sorry, this is the G10 handle. Jeff has the Macarta handle. So this is a red G10 handle. And then Jeff has, the, I bought Jeff the Macarta handle one. I, real, I This is my favorite knife I've ever owned. So, so art snacks absolutely love the product love the people behind the product they do lee and sarah uh do an amazing job with the product but it got to the point where i didn't need the paint brushes and watercolors and oils and things like that like there was always pencils and pens in there but um 
it was enough art products that I wasn't using, so I stopped my subscription. So last month, I get an email. Hey, your box is on the way. I'm like, that's interesting because I haven't been a subscriber in like a year and a half. Ooh, that sticker's dope. I said ship $25 a month just for the pretzel sticker. Um, so I get an email and then I was like, random email. I kind of blew it off and just went on about my business. And then the package showed up in my mail. So I open it up and it's your standard monthly box. So this is April. So this was, this was March box, March's box. So I messaged Lee. I said, Hey, not sure if you did this or you know, like just sent me a box randomly without telling me or if something's up because my subscription isn't active and it hasn't been for about a year and a half. So he says, Oh no, we did a customer migration or, you know, some kind of database migration. And there was some goofiness in that. And mine was apparently one of the ones that got re submitted somehow. So it's like, and so he said, I'd take care of it. So I'm like, cool. So I didn't think anything of it. Boom. April box, April box comes. They do have little, literal snacks in here. So we got Laffy Taffy cherry. So yeah, last month was a happy accident. This month it came again. I don't think I'm getting charged for these. Like I'm getting the, um, notification of shipment and I'm getting the product. Schmevelin. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks so much for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, I need to check my credit card because I don't know what's going on now that I've gotten a second one. I'll email Lee again, but, uh, you know, if I'm not getting charged for it, I, I certainly want it to stop. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, la last month's box had, um, two of the Cron Dash, um, the wood pencils, the smelly stink wood. It had stink wood and it had the pine one. So the white pine one, which are two of my favorite pencils anyway. So I was like, score. That was a good box. So let's see what we got in here. This one, the little card gives you a description of all the products. I know you can't read that on stream, but it gives you a description of everything in the box. So I like to kind of look at it first and then see if I have any questions. So this one didn't come with any paint, it looks like, which means it's a great box for me. And this, I mean, this, Art Snacks as a product is, I think, the best subscription, like, pin product that I've seen. It's just really good bang for the buck. All right, so what do we got here? All right, there's always usually some type of marker. So this is a iron, iron lac pump action chisel nib paint marker. So there's usually lots of paint markers. Um, lots of drawing markers, you know, your thick stuff. I've gotten, you know, I've gotten Posca's. I've gotten, I don't know, does crank, I've gotten crank paint. I don't know, does crank make pens? So these big honking art, art markers, which this color, you always get random colors. Like if I had a subscription and Jim has a subscription, we're both getting this pen, except mine could be green and Jim's could be purple. Like that's how they do the randomness in there. Oh, so this is the Pentel Orens, which has... I think this is the one with the sleeve protection up here in the tip. I'll have to check. But regardless, I only have a 0.2 and 0.3 orange. This is a 0.7 orange. Let me see if this is the tip protection one that I talk about. Yeah, this is the sliding sleeve. So what you do is you is really you just keep the sleeve exposed and then you can just write with the sleeve all the way down. Oh, D Willis Tech, did I miss your sub? Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for the sub. I appreciate it. I, I love you very much. I love you more than everyone else, in fact. How about that? Sorry, everyone else. Don't tell him I love everybody equally. So, um, yeah, so it tells you right here, please do not advance the lead beyond the pipe. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's a weird feel. Like, it's a mental problem that, okay, I can't see the lead, and I'm supposed to write like that. Um, so yeah, but regardless, this is a good pencil. I like it. What do we have here? This is a luminance. This is a Cronda Ash luminance colored pencil. What color is this? Primrose? I don't know if that's the color or the brand. 
Uh, da, 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 da. So this is another thing that like we would all get. Hey Jesse, this is a thing we would where we would all get different colors. It's this is a very light yellow looking. I don't know that that's the color of primrose. It's color number two forty two. It's not going to tell me what that is. It's the most light, fast, permanent color pencil ever made. Cron Dash Luminance. Its subtle velvety effect stems from two years of technical research. The high pigment concentration results in intense bright color with strong coverage and mixing capacity. So I'm not going to have strong color with an almost white pen, but that's cool. It'll give me something to try. Now we have a zebra brush pen, but I don't know what style of tip. This is a more broad tip. Let's see what they call this. This Oh, it's a double ender. It's a zebra sensations double ended brush pen. So. You have the finer tip on this end. I love zebra's brush. I love zebra has a super firm just pen. Jesse got eight inches of snow. That's crazy. That's crazy. And were you in shorts the day before? Like the day before the snow, was it shorts? And then we went to eight inches. Blaine, thanks so much, buddy. Sorry you couldn't make it back to the show the other day. Um, and then it looks like I have a herringbone art stack snicker. And I have Cherry Laffy Taffy, which I will not eat on stream. You like these, Jacqueline? Because I like the look and feel, but, like, I obviously need more than, like, barely yellow to, like, test out if I'm going to do other things. Um, I like my Erogitin, uh, my Tombos. Those have been my favorite, but I am willing to try these out. So... 80 degrees the day before. Yeah, because I was watching the baseball game, and even the fans in the stands were in t-shirts. Um, crazy. Crazy, crazy. So, yeah, that's Art Snacks in a nutshell. So, they, I want to say, I think the price is still 25 bucks. They obviously didn't pay me to say any of this stuff. This is just uh, <laughs> randomness. I just got to go see if I'm getting billed for it or not. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now let's do... Some interesting paper. So, um, it was Kurosawa, right? Kunisawa, the brand of paper that looks really, really nice. But we had very, very uh, many. We being the pen blogosphere had uh, five. We had varying levels of success with the quality of the paper. Um, so Kunisawa. Sorry, I just want to get the pronunciation right. I should have looked, but it's not on the, the bag. Yeah, so Kunisawa. So they make those beautiful notebooks. And like I tested some that were pretty good. Other people tested some that were pretty bad. Other bloggers tested some that, you know, had the same mixture, like depending on the quality. So they reached out to me, and I'm sure other people too, to let us know that they read all of our comments and took that feedback to heart and we're actually they he they told me in the email that like we were disappointed to hear that feedback so we want to try to make it better and i'm like i really appreciate that like that's a really hugely positive thing for any company to do so they said will you try the samples of paper and i said absolutely so he said we got new paper we test them out, let me know. And I said, sure. And then like a couple weeks later, I got an email that said, hey, how's the paper? And I was like, it didn't show up. I, I got I got no paper, <laughs> so I got nothing. And then they're like, oh yeah. Um, they went and looked and saw that they didn't have my address right. So their, their um, shipment failed. So this was my next shipment. So I owe them a test. I owe them a test run of this newspaper. Newspaper. New paper. I'm still uh, having language difficulties. Look at these little baby notebooks. They're about not much bigger than the dice. Unboxing me ASMR. Trash, trash scrunching. Uh, sent me a product catalog. Yeah, I'm good. I don't, I don't think I need that. Because I think the last time they sent it out, they sent me like literally one of everything. Actually, like three of everything. The box they sent me like was bigger than my head. All right, should we test this out? This is a really pretty notebook. 
I don't know what I'm supposed to test. Like, is it these little, is this like a little tester? Is this like a for real thing? But regardless, we'll test them all out. Because so I have fountain pens here and roller balls. The two best things I can tell if the paper's any good are fountain pens and roller balls, right? Liquid ink, watery ink. This is Kunisawa. So this notebook is actually really, really nice. This is a letter pressed cover. It's a really pretty, pretty green, green cover. Gray Will, where were you this weekend? Jim, thanks so much for the sub, man. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I just realized you weren't there. So this is real pretty. If anyone plays Destiny, it looks like um, one of the one of the parts of the Destiny game. Sorry, I had to dark out there for a second. Yeah, it's this is really really nice. So it says Cress Camon is a unique emblem in Japan. Paper Lab Kawaja. So it looks like one. I appreciate that, Jim. That means a lot. Thank you. So yeah, this is um, the. Covers printed by a different company than Kunisawa. So I'm wondering if this is like the real paper. Holy wow, this is smooth, like glass, glass smooth. It's ivory, unlined. It is. Hmm. Hmm. That is really smooth. Really smooth. I'm a little confused what's going on here. Oh, it's a calendar. <laughs> That makes sense. Once I saw the scoring, then I realized it was a calendar. So we can just bend the back here. We can prop it up. Prop it up on the desk like that. Whoops. Like that. Like that. So there's your calendar. Logical Prime stuff. Shujin gave me one for helping on. I don't think so. I don't think I've tried the Logical Prime. All right, let's test this out. So this is a, an extra fine Franklin Christoph Signet nib, that nib that I bought in, at the Atlanta Pen Show for this pen specifically. It is inked up with Rohr and Klingner Aubergine. So it's definitely smooth. There is no bleeding that I can tell of, at least in the feel. There is definitely no no show through. Sorry. So my lighting's good here because I have the window right in front of me, so the natural light's good. But I don't have light on my desk, so it's actually kind of hard for me to see. Um, if they go with this paper and everything, they're going to be in much better shape than they were before. This is perfect. Like, this is really good. Roaring Klingon. Roaring Klingon. Who came up with that? Because it's really good. Roaring. I think this might dry decently. Um, look at that. Nothing. This paper's weird. <laughs> In the best way possible. It is glassy smooth and insta dry. I mean, Roaring Cleaner is generally a dry ink to begin with. Um, like, look at that. Like, I barely got a little, little smudge there. All right, so Kunisawa is going to get some good feedback on this. I don't know if it's going to be for, um, for pencils. Uh, we'll see if I have some pencils in this other box I can test. But um, so this is a. Schmidt P8126. So I'm going to cap the pen. I'm going to run my finger. That's kind of what you expect. A little bit of smudge on that one. I'm shocked that the fountain pens didn't smudge. Um, it's pretty cool. So let me draw like a little block here. And like, like you can see it, like barely ghosted there, but there's no bleed through. There's definitely no feathering. And I mean, and it's not going to get much wetter. I mean, obviously I could have a larger, wider nib. Let's see if I can get these in here. 
I can have a larger, wider nib to lay down more ink, but this is super impressive. Based on just the hand feel, I didn't think it was gonna work like this, and it's really good. It's better than I thought. Yeah, D Wills. This, I'm, I'll see when they're gonna do. I'll I'll email them, and I'll play around with it some more. See what else. Um, sorry. See what else we can. Um, I can test it with, but I'm going to want to give them some feedback on this sooner than later. That way I can find if they're going to go in the standard notebook. So if you aren't familiar with the brand, if you can see these photos, you've probably seen a bunch of us review these notebooks you know, around the stationary blog. Prices for the MCM, mine was the cheapest, uh, full titanium, no extra etching or anything like that and it was 295 so that's the cheap one so they go all the way up to the full zirconium was 595 so that's the low and the high end of the range so yeah i will check in with kunisawa see when they're going to cut over to this paper um it's freaking good simple as that this is the kunisawa paul so we reviewed several of these notebooks for them in the past and they sent them out to a lot of bloggers and there was a wide range of performance characteristics with the page um, that they reached out and said hey we got that feedback we want to try we want you to try out this new paper and give us some feedback um, and it's really good. So I'm gonna find out if they're gonna use this across the board, uh, bo bo the board. Sailor question, if I'm desperately shopping around to grab something made by Sailor before the price increase next week, is there anything I should be aware of or keep in mind about the various models? Yeah, you should not buy one without trying it first. Slow your roll. Yeah, there's a Triforce on there. Um, there looks like almost a fake Mickey on here. Um, I don't know. This almost looks like, I don't know, familiar. I don't know what all is going on in here, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, 21 versus 14 matters. Nib firmness matters. Fineness matters. Don't rush into it, Evan. No rush, buddy. I wouldn't go for the slim, though, with your, your size mitts. I would at least get a standard or a regular. Yeah, maybe the Rebel Alliance logo. I don't know. And this is letterpress. This is really nice. Like I don't. This doesn't look like a regular item. I think they just must have done the paper and had it bound for some testers, because there's nothing in their catalog that resembles this at all. Like y'all have all seen the Kunisawa products that we've reviewed. They're all nice and clean and really good looking. This has like this is fun and has character. It's pretty rad. Pretty rad. So. Kunisawa, if you're watching, I know you're not, very much approve of this new paper. And I'm going to keep it out. We'll throw some other uh, throw some other pins at it here in a minute. Because now we're on to the big box. If you missed the chat earlier, <coughs> excuse me, that's the big box. I can recall two pins in here that I ordered. I'm not really sure what else I've got. So you have know the story if you've been around here. I order lots of things from Jeff jet pens i get a lot of things for free from jet pens um and i get to pick and choose the things i want from jet pens on my own so these are things that i have picked and i generally don't remember what they are so you should never i mean if you're unhappy with the penny meal you shouldn't be like uh married to it the b nib is pretty wide for the 3776. Um, that's why I got mine, an architect grind on mine, which is kind of perfect for that. Great. Uh, did you answer my question? I'm not going to answer your knife question until you answer my Atlanta Pin Show question. Why weren't you there? Did I miss that earlier? I'd have to scroll back up. Because that, that platinum broad nib is um, a really good base for any nib grinder. Yeah, I think I think Jim's right. Like, if you really don't like it, I would sell it and get another, 
get a replacement. Oh, you were there earlier on Saturday? I miss you. I missed you. Um, it is a Benchmade proper. So, with a G10 handle. So, it's very cool. Very happy with it. Favorite knife I've owned. All right. So, we're going to go into this box blind. We'll see what we got here. Uh, these are probably the two products I know that I got. Yep, these are the exact two. I remember buying two pins in this order. Um, so let's open them up. Yeah, that rose gold one. I B thirty seven seventy six B nibs are such a good platform for nib work. Wow, this box is nice. That's something I would do if I was in charge of Mommy's design. So, all right, first up. Uh, this is the Lamy Studio in the green, what do they call on this one? Olive Safari. Is the name on the box anywhere? Studio Olive. Olive. So this was one of the limited editions that was not allowed to come to the U.S. in the beginning. And now... They made it, so it's a really pretty olive. I like the studio. I don't know that I love the studio, but I it's one of those pins that I don't use a lot, but when I pick it up, I'm always like, ah, that's a pretty good pin. So these nibs are swappable very easily on the studio. So I have a gold nib studio and steel nib studio, so I got a stock extra fine in this, and I have a gold nib that I've had ground down to a needle point. So they're um, uh, easily swappable. So this is only my second um, second studio I own. Um, yeah, the grip is the kicker for a lot of people. I actually like it. I don't mind it at all. Um, the shape, the feel, the price point, kind of everything about this pin is really good. It's just not that popular because I think the grip is a turnoff for some people. So you all know, see the color in there. It's a pretty good color. But I didn't order the orange because it's a little, it's actually called terracotta. That's not, actually not my favorite shade of orange, and I just thought the green looked better. I think the Kara's Customs olive pins look better. But this is a different finish. This is like a matte, this is a different finish. Polish, taper, and metal. It's like kind of like the trifecta doesn't work there. Yeah, like for me, this works. And it's surprisingly not slick at all just because of your the natural tackiness of your fingers, I guess, unless you have really, really dry hands. Um, but I, that Keras Customs olive anodization is one of the prettiest colors that they make. This does not look or feel like that. So it's kind of different. Not a UT fan, no. Really, this this is a big taper for y'all. I don't find this to be a an extreme. This is by no means an extreme taper, and I'm a low gripper. Like, um... I mean, I get it, like, that the, there's no curve out or things like that. So, um, yeah, this one works for me. So I'm anxious to uh, get this one inked up. Um, one of the few pen, Lamy pens that comes with a converter on the low end of the price scale. They always get you that. The lack of the hourglass, yeah. That makes sense. I'm buying that. I'm buying that. So, cool. I like this pen. I'll, I'll be uh, interested to give this a shot. Uh, the Aeon was not a bust for me. Uh, some people did not like it whatsoever. I liked it. You like the Aeon more? Is it just, I don't know, is it maybe the diameter or maybe that it's not as shiny, bright shiny? They did a good job on this packaging. Very simple packaging, but I kind of I kind of like it. Very neat. I don't recall my what even my uh, last... Uh, studio came in because I only have one other one but yeah and the clip is a little weird too for the price though I think this is just a really good choice but uh, it's definitely not for everybody this pen has a lot of um, there's not a lot of middle ground on this pen this is kind of a love hate pen for sure and I get that all right we'll open that next
the Conan Minimalistica, are you saying it's a straight line down to the section? Because I think that's a taper. <laughs> I mean, it's a definite taper. And I like them both. Like, I have a, my Monarch Minimalistica that I love. But like I didn't like the Delrin Minimalistica. I thought it was too slick. So I sold that one and I got the Monarch. So, I don't know how many of you are like avid jet pins browsers, like when they post their new items. <coughs> I missed this one when it popped up and I thought it was gone forever. But they are working somehow, whether they're working directly with Nagasawa or somehow able to acquire these pins from them. They have a set, they have the limited edition ones. Uh, see you, Sarah. Have a nice day. Yep. So they have. Um, one, two, three, five colors of these. These are pretty crazy colors. I, I had a hard time picking out which color. Like the orange would be the obvious one, but it came down to the green and the blue one for me. Um, I think the pink is the best looking of the bunch probably, but I didn't want the gold trim. You have this one extra fine? Do I have this one extra fine? Yeah, me too. I have this one an extra fine. Um, Pin Twins. I love this color. It's pretty great. I got some mark on the nib here. It's gonna drive me insane. It's probably just something from shipping. But yeah, um, just like we talked about uh, a second ago, what Lamy does adds a converter for theirs. I don't think uh, Sailor, you pay two or three times as much for the pen. Do we have a converter? Yes, we have a converter. Worst converters on the market, but hey, we have a converter. <clears throat> These do not have tiny sparkles. They're just kind of individually colored. They have the ink bottle on the finial, and then they have um, the rooster on the nib, which you probably can't see. We're gonna get there, yeah. So, um, do they have a subtle sparkle? I just can't see it in this lighting. So. Yeah, I'll get better lighting, but I trust, I trust we Re rewizzles with that because she's been using this pen. Um, but yeah, this is, these colors are freaking good. I need the matching ink. I probably do. Although I don't do like the baby blue ink colors. Like I'll do, I like it in the pen. So like this is a really great pen color for me, especially since so many of these have the rhodium trim. Um, I don't want an ink color this light. Is it that light? You'll have to, you'll have to link it to me, Jesse. Um, so I hope to see more of this from jet pens um, because uh, these are fun. What? All right, Sonny Boy, that is an excellent question. I have no earthly idea. So what are we thinking here? Rewizzles, what do you use um, for ink so far? I have so many bright blue inks um, inked up right now in fountain pens. I almost don't want a blue. Uh, blue black probably I don't pink would work look good in here no it's not gonna be pilot blue black I, maybe a pink yeah or a lilac the the one red I like I don't think I would like with this I like red with this but it has to be a lighter red which is why I'm thinking pink PCB PPB F O F. Yeah, I'm thinking something more along like Momiji. Um, some, you know what would look good? Like uh, Diamine Hope Pink. It's bright without being too like crazy. It's very very pinky, not very magenta. -y. So yeah, I'll work on that. I'll let you know. Purple might work. I got a bunch of purples inked up too. Hoping it's too light, maybe. But this is a light pen. I mean, this is like Easter egg blue. Yeah, cotton candy pink goes good with like this light, light, light blue. No, FOF. I don't like orange with this. Yellow green would work. Oh, maybe, you know what? I got that Pilot 101st anniversary yellow ink. That would go good with this. There you go. 
I think I should maybe try that. It's like a golden yellow. Island sky blue. Let me look at this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. It's not as light as I thought it might be. Approved. I just got to order it. Verdigris. See, I could do a blue. Blue black would be good, but I think I'm going to use the, the pink. I thought the yellow 101st anniversary ink was kind of the only interesting one, to be quite honest. I thought the green and the purple were very boring. Melon tea, that would be cool. I don't have that one, but that's a cool color. I do like that. All right, we'll work on that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go something pinky or maybe the yellow. We'll work on that. We'll, we'll Instagram that out at some point in time. All right, those are the two things I knew I was getting in this box. Wrong. Wrong. What, what, are, what are we wrong about? I'm usually wrong about a lot of things. You have to be more specific. Okay, so this is, this is all that's in here. Oh, let's read our Jet Pens cartoon. Oh, about the colors. Yeah, I thought they were boring. What are you gonna do? I mean, look at this shirt. The shirt's not boring. Those inks are boring. I need some. I need some. I need some hot inks. That blue is boring. Oh, the black green. That's probably. Oh, that's probably the second best one. That one's pretty good. I'll grant you that. One. All right. So. Yeah, this one's not that funny. I'm not gonna be able to show you this one. Did I swatch them? No, I looked through all the swatches though. I did like the black green. So this is, uh, you're not gonna be able to see this. So we have neatly organized, neatly organized, neatly organized, messy desk. I have my own organization. Um, I have my own system of organi organizing things, thanks. So that one's not a haha -ha funny. I know you're messing with me, but I've, I'm really not impressed with the color range of those inks I am otherwise I would have bought like three or four of them CJC John yeah I don't remember what I was it was it was it wasn't anything important it was maybe something about what was in it or I can't remember who knows all right Jacqueline I think you want to hang out for this next thing I think this is something you like I'm not sure Silver ink would be cool. Oh, a gray ink would look good in that blue pen. That's a good idea. I also have, now that you say that, I also have an ugly ink. Uh, yeah, I like that, TJ. Um, that ugly, uh, not ugly, the Bayou Nightfall ink from Papier Plume, that kind of blue, green, junky thing. All right, there's a lot of stuff in here. Sorry, this is really loud, but it's, it's packed well. all kinds of cool stuff in here but I want to flip it over to get to this other thing I am very interested in it even though it's something that I make at not this is kind of something similar so this is is this Lihit? Lihit Lab? yeah this is Lihit Lab so it's a B6 carrying pouch in camo which y'all know I love I love the camos um I just thought the little, they do great job with organizers. Um, uh, B6 is best six, you think? I don't know that I have many, I have maybe one or two B6 notebooks, but I like the more rectangle, the more square shape of it, that's for sure. Um, Lihit Labs does such a good job with their carrying cases. I do, I do, but I don't make the B6 notebook carrying cases. B5 is the best five, we're all gonna all kind of fight. Look at this now, I gotta, this man that sucks. I need to take this thing off to get it out check this out this case is cool right and I don't even know the price I guess I could check it on here or we could check it online but I mean if I had to guess it's probably like 20 bucks huh like all their stuff so cheap uh, no prices are listed on here b6 y'all go look up the b6 pouch 
And that's the thing about these. Like, so we have all kinds of little storage pouches over here, pocket here, and a little pocket here, like larger items, credit card. We have a writing. Oh, this is the back of the notebook. So the notebook is passed through the cover slides in and out of there. I mean, this is a really good job. Like 29 bucks. Thank you. Um, three separate pouches here, full width, B6, two thirds pocket, one third pocket, um, zip case. Like y'all want to know why we don't make all the things. I mean, just look at something like this Cordura, our favorite brand of fabric. Um, it's crazy. Like this is just such a good product. Um, exterior pocket front, uh, hang loop on the back. So it has, this thing actually has a strap, like a purse strap, snap pocket in the back, rear hooks for, I'm sure it's got a strap in here somewhere, I guess. Um, I, it's really good. Like, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, if Knock made this, there's no way. Strap sold separately. Thank you, Evan. There's no way I could sell this for less than 100 bucks. There's just not. No way, no how. Cause, because there's so many externals. Like, I could make a B6 cover, like we make the seed cases, for like the same price range, 60, 70 bucks. But this has full zip exterior, a snap and loop back. This panel, this panel is expensive. Like the construction, it was, this is probably like a hundred dollar case if I make it. Paul, this is like, this was one of the things, like I was excited about that sailor, but I wanted to see this because the pictures online really did it justice. I was like, that's a lot of value and a lot of usefulness for the price. So, yeah, economies of scale. I mean, just a litany of things, which is cool. That's why I like, I love these products. Like, this is really, really nice. So, good job by Lahit Lab. Almost everything they make is great. Every now and then, they'll come out with a little weird design. Uh, some of the smaller ones haven't been the right dimensions for the things, but uh, litany is a great word. Kiosk is one of my favorite words. I do use litany uh, quite a bit. So yeah, there's the strap on it, but as Evelyn said, sold separately. I'm surprised that sold separately because out of the whole cost of this entire product, that has to be a very, very small part of it. Um, like that's probably like a 10 cent strap in cost wise, like in the whole thing. So parenthetically, so very good job, Lihit Lab international standard okay this is something i'll have to look up so there's a little logo on here it says international standard one third inch pitch i have no clue what that means so i'll have to look up that because i always wonder what these little standard things are all right so that's me raving about that what do we got next as i drink oh so Jet pens made their pocket to Moy Rivers, so now they're doing an A5, so I had to get those. Let me look at that one, Jim. So yeah, Jet Pens um, does a really good pocket. I have one of these. This was sitting in the review queue, Jim. Does is it useful? So yeah, I have that sitting there. Either I'm gonna review it or send it out to someone to review. Because I thought the same thing. I thought that was a, a cool little pouch. Definitely like that. <coughs> Is there a notebook cover that makes a soft cover notebook feel more like a hard cover notebook? There's gotta be, right? I can't think of anything off the top of my head because they're all gonna have some type of fabric and it depends on how much added structure they put in the walls yeah i don't know jesse that's a really good question there's got to be 
I, I would assume there is. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'll keep my eyes peeled. If you've been looking all over, I mean, you're up on these things. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, some of the leather stuff is going to be closer, but, you know, that's just expensive. Like, the leather stuff's going to give you that firmer feel, <clears throat> as opposed to, like, the nylon and cloth that I deal in mostly. That's the only thing I can think of right off the top of my head. Especially for the pocket notebooks. Those will be pretty durable. So, yeah. A5, Tamoy River. I've used the pockets. Um, really nice. I'm going to take a picture of this pile of trash I got going over here. Platinum. I know what this is. I've heard mixed feelings about the Procyon. Isn't that what this is called? Procyon? Um, to want to check them out. Yeah, Procyon to check them out myself. I got yellow, that's a pretty rad yellow. That's, this is not the cheap one, this is like the third step up one. Yeah, so this is like 40 to $50, where they go $3, $20 for the Play's Ear. So the Preppy's three, no, excuse me, the Preppy's five, Play's Ear's 20, 22, and then this is the third, and this one's around 40. So, it's definitely a stronger, more durable barrel. It looks like it's probably the same nib, which is you can find on the preppy. It looks like it could be a little longer. Um, yeah, that is, that's totally the problem with a pen in this price range. It looks good, feels good. I, I just wanted to try this one for myself because I've heard really good things and I've heard really bad things. Um, it feels better than I thought it would right out the gate. I do know that. Like, I've... I didn't have, um, I thought the, I thought it might feel cheaper. Like I, I, the, um, plays ear obviously writes really, really well, but it's, it's so lightweight. It doesn't feel like anything's there. This one at least has some weight to it. So, um, yeah, I'll be anxious to give that one a shot. I love the barrel color. It's a, it's got a matte finish too. So this is really cool. Oh yeah. The cool, that it's the $30 one. Um, unless you buy it in the U.S. and then it's like 50 They price that one weird. Yeah, the cool or the balance, depending on where you buy it. Um, in commemoration of Procyon release, limited for the first production, mixable ink special colors. So we have golden ochre cartridge, aqua emerald cartridge, and dark violet cartridge. Dark violet will go well with this pen, so that's probably what I'll do here. So, uh, yeah, so that's my friend Joseph's site. What does he say about it? Um, I know like Mike Madison really did not like it. Cool as demo balance is solid. Oh, okay, I thought that was a regional thing, but that there is a difference. <laughs> Platinum Violet Ink is a direct injection. We just gave uh, Emil PTSD. Oh, they have the recipes in there? So why doesn't the um, Platinum's mixable inks get more play? I get yelled at that for a little bit because I, you know, promote inks that aren't mixable when there's a, a platinum ink line. Is it just people are scared to do that? Yeah, it's so much work. But, like, it's kind of cool. I mean, like, Japan has entire shops where the whole point is for you to go mix your ink, right? I guess people just don't want to do it themselves. That's the other thing, Jim, is the plain inks are pretty uninteresting. You kind of have to mix them um, to get them there, right? To make them into something you want to use. Okay, Jesse, that's true. Like, you know, if you're going to buy a set, that's a pretty big outlay when you can but just buy a single bottle of something interesting that someone else made. That's a good point. Yeah, so there you go, Platinum. There's all your feedback on why people aren't interested in buying your mix ink sets. Boom. We've done your job for you. Just sell us more ink colors. Mix them yourselves and sell them to us and we'll buy them, right? After they had that um, such a huge win with those Platinum Classic inks, we're almost, we're two years now out of those Platinum Classic inks and they haven't released anything else. 
I mean, talk about a, a market being left behind. Um, Platinum's got nothing going in inks, really, other than carbon. All right. This is a new Jetstream model. I'll buy pretty much any Jetstream multi-pin model. It's a really pretty mint color. Let's see if you can see it better over here. It's absorbing like all the light. It's not going to pick it up well. But this is a very minty green color that you cannot see. Let's see if there's any way to get it done here. You can see it a little bit better that way. Still all the black and white just getting it crazy. It's a great color. Yeah, I don't have any light on in here, Emil, other than natural light from the window. So it like that works for like faces, but not for products. Or Jim, sorry. Um, one of these days, um, when I commit to streaming, I'll get like real lighting so we can see natural colors. <laughs> right now, I'm just not super concerned about it. Um, this is a great shape of the barrel for the jet stream. I like it. Very cool. I don't know what this one's called. Oh, this, and I got it with 0.38 millimeter refills, which for jet streams, man, that's crazy fine. It's like a 0.25 millimeter actual line width when you use a 0.3 uh, jet stream. Like, there's no way you'll be able to see this. Or gauge how fine the line is. But boy, does it write smooth. Like... That's like crazy craziness. You can't see that. You can pretend you can see that. So this is a great barrel. I really like it. It's thin and light, but feels strong enough. That's cool. That's 0.38 jet stream. So that line is gonna be like a 0.25 gel ink line. It's really fine. This is good. I'm gonna use the heck out of this pen. I, I like the, the shape of the barrel. Yeah. It's, it's amazing that they can make a pen this fine with like a ballpoint type ink that is still smooth, and they do. All right, this is a weird one that I had to see for myself. Friction colored pencils, right? So what are we gonna do here? What's... I guess we're gonna find out if it works or something. So this is the Friction 12 colored pencil set. These are extraordinarily expensive. I remember putting these in the cart going, oh, what, how much are these? Y'all look these up while I'm opening. But I, I remember them being like, that is a lot of money for maybe not a great pencil. But we're gonna find out. Like, would I ever choose to purchase a, these as opposed to like some of my other already crazy expensive palette I mean colored pencils that I love so this is the 12 pack all right let's do blue so so $22 for a 12 pack that's another one of my favorite words Jim egregious that's egregious um, because I don't know what this is like these are all these are just all colored plastic tips these are not erasers these are like legit um, friction friction tips so and I understand that colored pencils are not made to be erased these do not feel good these feel fake there's no texture to the line so I guess the idea is that you can just erase them it that erases like crazy clean so if you want an erasable colored pencil okay it works like it really works palette Ac acrobol is totally as nice as the jet stream i wish it could get more run it's 100 percent as nice put it in the fridge see what happens i'm just confused on why this is a product a little bit i guess since most colored pencils aren't erasable, but who's doing that? I had, oh, what's, oh, we need to send these to Rocketbook. Maybe they'll make us a uh, colored pencil Rocketbook. <laughs> so, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm being mean there, but they deserve it. 
Um, but yeah, this will be the next Rocket Book product you watch. But yeah, these erasers are just the plastic tips for the friction tips. Like, they look cool, like, hey, look, a purple eraser, but it's just the plastic. Like, it's hollow. There, there's, it's, it's not a substantial thing. I don't see, I want a sharpener. I don't bring, I never have a sharpener over here. Um, I am, okay. I mean, I'm just a little bit confused. Technically they work, yes. It does what it says it's supposed to do. I'm just, don't know why we need it. I guess it's cool. Like, it erases really well. I will not, I will not uh, deny that. So, okay, it just seems like the price is high. I mean, y'all can't see that at all. That's light green. Let's do black. They don't feel great, but Rocket Book Adult Coloring Books. There you go. This erase is better than I thought, though. That's kind of impressive. Not going to lie. I just don't know that I'll use these. These will probably go straight to the kids. I'll probably review them or send them to Sarah to review because I know she likes to draw with her kids. Um, so, yeah, they can probably find a better use for these than me. It erases spectacularly. Okay, I buy the buy the highlighter aspect of it, highlight and then mark up. I mean, but I use colored pencils for that already, so maybe the eraser comes in, uh, comes in handy there. I'll buy that. Maybe there's uh maybe there's a use for these after all. I'm gonna sharpen these. I'm a little concerned that, like, what is this white around all these tips here? So I want to get into these a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe there's a reason to have them, but they're expensive. Did we decide they're $22 for this? Because they are definitely overpriced for that. Or were they 13 whatever that someone was saying. So, but yeah, $22 is a lot of money for these. But I will review it. They erase so well. There might be something to this. I might change, I might eat my words real quick. I don't see how I could ever recommend them for the price though. The case is nice. Yeah, the case is perfectly fine. They're large. You know, these are long pencils. You know, there's the jet stream laying on top of it. I mean, these are nice full size big pencils. So, hmm, I might be, I'm not changing my line because of the, mine because of the price, but they might actually be somewhat useful. I want to see if this, this pencil comes back. Did they blend like other colored pencils? Let's see. I want to see if they come back in the um, freezer. So the 12 pack. Thank you, Blaine. 22. That's a real expensive fountain pen. I am mean, fountain pen. Colored pencil. As someone who uses very expensive colored pencils and who uh, preaches for very expensive colored pencils. These are very expensive. These do not blend whatsoever. Zero blending. That just write uh, just writes directly over. No, no attempt at even blending. Okay. Interesting. We'll figure something out. So, palette, friction, colored pencils. Something you didn't know was a thing and I didn't either till recently so cron dash is more expensive I'm sure my zebras are more expensive per pencil my zebras that's a 30 pencil set no it's probably cheaper my 30 pencils zebra sets are like 36 bucks erogeton let me look and see <clears throat> Uh, Karan Dash, definitely more expensive. So my 30 color set is $34. So they're cheaper, the ones I use. It's just you get more, so it's expensive. expensive. But yeah, my 30 pencil sets are $34. So a little over a dollar a pencil. 
and these are creeping up to like dollar seventy five, two dollars a pencil. So, all right, one more thing, and then we'll wrap it up for today. So I've opened all the things, made an enormous mess, um, and it's just a simple, simple, easy thing. It's like I didn't save the best for last or anything like that. That was the, the sailor and stuff I uh, was probably the best thing in this box the sailor fountain pens but I bought this um, this new washi tape y'all know I like washi tape and these have these cool um, jellyfish underwater design it's dark and it comes with stickers too so this is like a combo meal combo meal pack let's open this up real quick so this was just a new brand to me that I wanted to test out So you can see all the little stickers it comes with. So it comes with like a little pack of different jellyfish and shell stickers. And then the tape itself is this really neat. It's dark with blue jellyfish. It looks like those, you know, super way deep under the sea um, creatures. The only thing would be better if it glue in, glowed in the dark or something. Glue in the dark. Marie is yelling at me through the screen right now. All right, I can't, there, I can't find where that opens. So yeah, that's a pretty cool looking tape, if you ask me, or washi tape. So that's just me. Y'all know I like my funky washi tapes for my little projects and my stickers, so. All right, that's it. That's all the, that's unboxing all the things. Made a huge trash mess. I'll have to pick this up at some point. Um, I did enough trash mess at my house unloading from the pin show. But I've managed to do it again here. That's cool. Those friction friction pencils are still bugging me. Maybe there's something there. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to look for some other re reviews, see what other see what other uh, people think about them. All right, y'all got any y'all got any uh, questions for me before we wrap it up for today? I've got like an hour and a half of unboxing stuff. That's always cool and fun. Um, new Kunisawa paper, winning. So we'll see when it uh, gets replaced in their products. Um, yeah, y'all got anything else for me? This was fun. Is this going on YouTube? Yes. I just need to cut out like the first ten minutes of the music that I play in the background just because um the it'll get taken down because it was even though it was like Muzak type uh songs it was still like uh, Wu-Tang and D Antwoord uh where will the Coleman pop up next it will pop up should hopefully pop up Friday on the website uh, we only made a hundred of them, so we're going to put the rest up on the website and sell those out. And then we'll try to do one for each pin show we physically attend to. I'm not going to guarantee that because production timelines tend to get screwy. But um, we're planning on having him in Raleigh next. So, uh, online. Yeah, online, online. Any surprises today? No. Uh, me showing up for a Twitch stream is the biggest surprise. So... That's your surprise. Is Jeff coming to St. Louis this year, and will you ever join him? It doesn't look like it, and maybe. So it doesn't look like we'll be in St. Louis this year, and I will not be joining him if he does not go. Um, but we'll, I'll make it to St. Louis one year. I want to. Uh, heads and fails. We're not in it yet. we got questions. Not a question, but I'm looking to watch an NBA playoffs game here in NYC. I thought this might be a year I uh, – I get into the NBA a little bit more, but I didn't. I think the Premier League took over. Uh, Blaine says, am I going to Triangle? Yes, I booked my hotel rooms yesterday. So 40 left, gone in one day, without question. Gone in a couple hours, I'd imagine. New colorway, yep. Never mind, I just answered that, did I? Yeah, we will not Wu-Tang the YouTube. Uh, yay for Raleigh. Different colors at different shows, yes. We will not do this color uh, again for a pin show. Doesn't mean it won't maybe be a stock item in that color one day. The next pin show will have a different color. People want us to bring unique show-only cases as we do stuff. So, um, yeah, 
that's cool uh corinne any updates on the ooh la la yes but we'll let uh anna discuss those probably in the coming weeks but um we should be on track for june ish maybe july maybe july by ship them they're going fine um st louis one day jacqueline's giving away a coleman why because you hate it or you're just a nice person i think it's because you're a nice person i'll give you that how does someone join your slack channel send me your email address and i'll send you an invite see you paul um how's the cwt sketchbook going after a few weeks really good it uh made me misspell blackwing last night it's so good that's how good it is atlanta good and good for next year yep absolutely sorry slack is full oh jim you'll be at uh, raleigh that would be great Sam, that's your first pin show. That's a very good first pin show. It's just right sized. Am I going to watch the Masters this weekend? I will be watching it this afternoon when I get home. So absolutely. Um, I love the Masters. I've been there once for practice rounds. If you're not a golfer and you for some reason get the opportunity to walk the grounds during the tournament, you should say yes and make it happen. It's an experience. It's unbelievable. I've gotten to do it once, and it will, I will never forget. Like, I remember, like, so many specific things. Party at your place for Triangle? I will not be there because I'll have the kids in tow, so they're saving me there. All right, Gray, I will I will hit you up next year. Um, when are you heading, are you heading down uh, this weekend? So, yeah, just like, you know, I'm a – sort of tennis fan but we had the opportunity to go to Wimbledon in London and I do not regret that at all so like even if that's not your thing but when you get to experience like one of the elite events yeah that's crazy my neck of the woods Florida is a different country from Georgia they are not the same thing even remotely um there's lower Alabama which is the panhandle which is where the meth is produced. <laughs> and then there's um, the, the, the um, Black Wong area of Florida, which is um, where all the crazy people live. So they, Florida is a different country. Yeah, that is like you hit that border and like they should just start requiring passports. It's special. And I love Florida. I mean... I, I would love to live in the panhandle um, as long as I wasn't around people. <laughs> as long as I could be by myself. <laughs> yeah, watch out for Florida, man. That's funny. Florida does not have their own barbecue sauce. Pretty much all the states surrounding Florida do. It's just not that important in Florida. Barbecue's not much of a thing. And it's, it's funny. As soon as you cross the border, it's not. Other there's meth. Yeah, Disney's cool. I like going to Disney. I miss it. We go once every few, three, four years or something like that for like a long weekend. It's fun. It's fun. Disney's like its own little secluded place. It, it's almost not Florida. Yes, they grill fish and shrimp. Florida definitely has too many imports for sauce. See, I like how this, this turns into the, the, the live chat right afterwards. This is good. Pin show question. Any idea what would be a good price for a used cog at a show i don't know what a cog is i'm did you mean cop k-o-p what's a cog king of groceries cubano's rule i had a cubano at pont city market i was dying for they have a really nice nice place there um some of the best uh i don't get cuban food that much but uh florida definitely can bring the cuban food um without question cuban foods one of my favorite 450 co fo for kop used or under i definitely more I, 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 depending on condition if it's in good condition i would think above 500 have you seen the twisby eco transparent orange yes and that looks like a worldwide release right that looks like a stock release as best as i can tell this is why you don't this is why on the FOMO thing that it's okay to not uh, get the thing. Don't worry about FOMO. 
because there's always a next thing. Like I very happy with my solid color orange Japan only Twisby Eco. But if I missed it, hey, there's this cool orange translucent one coming too that I could get for, you know, a third of the price of what I paid for it. So don't worry about the FOMO thing too much. We all like to joke about that. And sure, there's some FOMO stuff you want to jump on if it's uh if it's really, really good, but there's always a next thing in that something like that. That one the one that the thing that um made me realize that was the Sailor Apricot Ink. Like I sourced like two bottles from what's aesthetic bay is that the one like when they didn't have any more they had the original ken mckin makuse i was like well i'm never going to be able to get sailor apricot anymore and then guess what they made more i was in the slack this morning maybe yesterday red kop arushi one of the ebonite ones because that's a completely different animal 900 sounds cheap for that one So, you know, it just depends. King of Pen Pro Gears are cheaper than the traditional King of Pens. Acrylic. Acrylic red. What is red? Is it old or something? Or is it the mosaic? I'll have to go look. I might I might uh, brave the slack for that. Yeah, Twizzy Purple coming around again. Yeah, so it's okay if you FOMO. Like, you'll have other chances purple cap band yeah i'll go look at that king of pin just because now I'm, I'm curious what it is whoops hey look i have eight thousand messages on my phone interesting all right well i'm gonna wrap it up on that um i'll check y'all later have a good one thanks for hanging out we should do this more often bye